We are officially in the month of May, and that means it is time for another Met Gala video. As you saw in the thumbnail, today we are recreating the iconic butterfly dress that Vogue used to announce this year's exhibition theme, which is Sleeping Beauty's Reawakening Fashion. And it really highlights sustainability and the delicate nature of textiles, which I think is such a cool theme and I cannot wait to see what looks everyone pulls out for this, but the dress we're recreating was originally designed by Alexander McQueen, and we'll be touching on that a little bit later on in the video, but for now, we have a DIY to get to, so let's get to it. So there are two main things that you'll notice when you look at this dress. Obviously, number one, the butterflies. Hello. It's something super unique. You don't see many fashion items made of dead insects. So that catches the eye, of course. Also very delicate and dainty and beautiful. But number two, the second thing you'll notice is the shape of the dress. I had to do some research on this point to figure out how Alexander McQueen's fashion house came up with this shape and like what structuring would go into creating a dress shape like this. And to be quite honest, I'm still a bit unsure of exactly how they structured this specific dress, but this shape is achieved from what I found by something called a pannier petticoat. It's like a hip petticoat, basically. You can get these on Amazon. Um, I almost got one, but then I figured, you know what? I would rather use the money that I would spend on that. They're about like $30, $35 or so. I'd rather spend that money to get more butterflies because your girl has big enough hips as is. So, you know, getting the exact structure correct wasn't that big of a deal to me anyway, but just know that that's what that is. I will leave an Amazon link for you below if you are wanting to recreate this dress and want to get it a bit more accurate than I did, but those two points there. As far as the skeleton of the dress, aka the base or, you know, your actual dress, I wanted to sew this and make it myself. If you'll recall, last year around this time I used my first AdSense check to get a sewing machine and <laughs> I really haven't used it a whole lot since then, but I want to and I want to learn how to sew properly and get better at it. And so I hopped on over to Etsy and found this racer dress form pattern. Wow, pattern. And I already had like a my nude color stretchy mesh fabric that I had previously found at the thrift store. I decided to go with that. Um, again, not super similar to what I would imagine Alexander McQueen used. Um, theirs looks a bit more structured and like very tailored and precise measurements and everything. I could not be bothered to do that with this. I knew the wings and getting them attached were gonna be a hassle anyway, so why not make my life easier? We'll just get something form-fitting, it'll suck me in. It'll be easy to work with, and so that's what I did. And then touching on the butterflies. So with the original, I initially assumed that these were probably real preserved butterflies. They are not, which I was happy to see. Um, I feel like it may be hard to ethically source preserved butterflies. I'm not really sure. I haven't done much research on that, but these are faux and that makes me happy because things like faux furs and faux skins, faux leathers make such a big difference in terms of sustainability and just the ethics of fashion. So I was happy to see these were fake. So all of that to say, if Alexander McQueen can use fake butterflies for their dress, so can we. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. I was luckily able to find some fake butterflies on Amazon. 
Uh, these monarchs were made with like, costume feathers that had been glued together and painted. Now in terms of attaching the butterflies, I'm so sorry y'all, we are just going to be hot gluing. <laughs> I cannot be bothered to sit and individually sew each and every butterfly wing as I'm sure Alexander McQueen did with the original. It's just not gonna happen. Uh, so we're using our handy dandy tried and true hot glue gun for this project. It's efficient, it gives a relatively durable hold, um, easy to mend pieces or wings if they happen to fall off. And this will also allow for easy manipulation of the wing placement and layering. And so it's just, it really is the best option for me in this remake here. So with all of that said, let's assemble this dress. Nearly 500 butterfly wings later, yes, we legitimately used 480 butterfly wings on this project, but we are done. And I'm very excited to show you the finished product. So let's head on over to the final result. We've arrived at the finish line. What do you guys think? Okay, a couple notes before I give you my thoughts. On some things I would do differently if I were to redo this, and if you are remaking this dress, pay attention to this part because 
it might save you some headaches and stresses and might make this an easier project for you. First and foremost, the biggest thing, I would purchase at least twice as many butterflies as I did. I should have gotten more. Originally, I just had one pack of these butterflies, <laughs> so I am glad I ended up getting two at least. I'd get four, maybe five minimum. That would be how many? Two? That would be over a thousand butterflies, which is crazy, but so necessary if you want this to look as good as possible. I would probably, instead of using a My Nude Color Mesh base for the dress, I'd probably try to find like an orange color or something that better blends in with the butterfly wing color as opposed to my skin color. It's just gonna make everything look more cohesive. It's not gonna be as apparent when there are gaps between the wings that you adhere to the dress. And finally, if I truly had unlimited time or really wanted to make this the best remake of this dress that I possibly could, I would sew on the butterflies. I don't even wanna think about how long that would take. Just an absurd amount of time, I'm sure, but it is going to look the best in the long run and it's going to be the most durable. And so, you know, on that same note, I'd probably use a different fabric if I were to be sewing these on, something that is more tailored and measured to your specific measurements and something a bit more durable than a stretchy mesh fabric. But that plus probably the hip petticoat if I was to go that route. But to each their own. I think this remake worked just fine. I'm very happy with the results. I do wish there was more coverage in the back of it. I didn't show much of the back because it was pretty revealing. It was pretty sparse back there. <laughs> uh, the front looked good though, and I really love the shape. I loved the dress pattern that I got from Etsy. So again, that will be linked below as well as all of the other products used in this DIY. This is so fun. I look forward to my Met Gala video every single year. If you're on a Met Gala, binge of DIYs. If you're celebrating this year's Met and want to watch some other videos on the topic, last year I remade, I believe, three of my past favorite Met Gala looks. So I'll have that video linked for you as well and also probably somewhere in the cards up here. With that, thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!